Okay, so this next section combines what took almost an entire chapter in Algebra 1 into a single section. So we'll take two days on this. Uh, this section is about factoring, factoring polynomials. Now there are three methods that I have. There's using the greatest common factor, uh, using uh, what's called quadratic factoring, we'll see that in a moment, and grouping, the method of grouping. Those are my three primary methods. There are, are some other tricks uh, here and there, and we'll get to them uh, later. But for now, greatest common factor, factoring quadratics, and factoring by grouping. So let's start with the greatest common factor. How I can tell if a, if a polynomial can be factored by a greatest common factor is by seeing that they all have similar uh, letters, the same letter in every single one. This has S in every single one. This has T in every single one. Uh, also, the numbers. The numbers are multiples of the same number. This, all these numbers, 3, 9, and 6, are all multiples of 3. So I can look here, and I see all these terms have a lot of letters in common. The numbers are all factors of a certain, uh, are all multiples of a certain number, and number 3 in this case. This tells me, hey, greatest common factor is my method of factoring. That's what I should start with. So that's what I'm going to start with. Now, I'm going to show you the slow way of finding the greatest common factor, and then I'll show you the fast way. Okay? The slow way is this. Write down each one of these totally factored out, like the factor tree. So this is 3. It can't break down 3 times s and times t squared. So that's t times t. This is what I mean. Every single factor. Here, that's 9. I'm not worried about the minus and greatest common factor because minus or plus doesn't really matter for that. 9 can be break, broken down to 3 times 3. And then s cubed is s times itself 3 times. And then t times itself once. Okay, so there's that one. Now let's do this one. 6 is 2 times 3. S is S times S, S squared, sorry, and T squared. And the greatest common factor means that they have to, it has to be a factor that's common in all of them. So as I look here, there's one 3 here. There's one 3 here. There's one 3 here. The 3 is common in all of them. So I take one 3. 1, 3 is part of my greatest common factor. Okay, now I look at the letters. Well, there's 1s here, 3, 2. Well, there's only one in common because this one only has one. So only one of the s's is in common. I don't have three s's in common. I don't have two because this one only has one. Now if I look at the t's, this one has two, that one has one, that one has two. Again, they only have one t in common. So my greatest common factor, or my GCF, as we'll call it uh, as we move on, is 3ST. 3 times S times T. Those, that's the greatest common factor. Okay, that's the long way of doing it. Breaking it all down and picking out the ones that are in common with all the different terms. We have three terms here. Fast way is a little bit simpler, but it requires an understanding of what it means for greatest common factor. Here's the fast way. Look at the numbers. 3, 9, 6. What number goes into all of them? What's the biggest number that goes into all of them? And that number is 3. Sometimes it's this simple. Sometimes the numbers are a little more complicated. But in this case, you can see 3. And then the next thing is, do they have letters in common? OK, they all have S's. So I'm going to take S. Now I need to know what power. And to determine this, you just look at the lowest power. Uh, 1, 3, 2. Lowest power is 1, so I took 1. Look at the t's. t squared, t, t squared. Uh, they all have t, so I know t is going to be in here. And the lowest power is 1, so I leave it as 1. Now, if this had all been t squared, then the lowest power would be 2. I'd put t squared. Okay. So again, look at the numbers. Take the biggest number that goes into all of them. Look at the letters. If they have them all in common, all the way across in every term, take the lowest power. That's how, that's how you can determine the greatest common factor quicker. Okay, now for the second part. This is like the reverse distributive property. Factoring is, is kind of like that. It's either reverse distributive, reverse double distributive, so it's going backwards. 
So when we do the distributive property, we multiply this times whatever's inside. Well, now when we factor in this, in, in this matter, we're going to take this and divide it by everything that's outside. Because this times what's ever in here equals this, so this divided by that equals that. Okay, now I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but here we go. I'm going to go 3ts, uh, sorry, 3st squared, and I'm going to divide it by the greatest common factor. If I do that, 3st squared over 3st, I'll see that the 3 cancels, the s cancels. t squared over t, well, that's just t. So I'm going to write t. If I do it here, negative 9s cubed t over 3st, I get negative 3 for the number, negative 9 over 3. S cubed over S is S squared, and T over T, though, that cancels. And then for my last term, plus 2, because 2 over 3 is, uh, sorry, 6 over 3 is 2. Uh, S squared over S is S. T squared over T is T. And so I have now factored. Whenever you factor, there's going to be at least one parenthesis in your answer. Sometimes two, sometimes even more than that. In this case, I have one. This is kind of like the reverse distributive. Again, I pulled out 3st, my greatest common factor, and then I divided it, divided each term by it, and that goes, goes in here. So there you go, factoring by the greatest common factor.